Um, hello, YouTube. I wanted to um, tell you something about using a hex editor to repair files. And I want to repair a uh, corrupt move file. And I want to tell you something about the very basic structure of a move file, the, the, the minimal information we need to see if we can repair a corrupt move file. And uh, it's this file. It's uh, an actual real world case. It's not something I cooked up or something. It's not some made up scenario. Uh, and the scenario is that um, this file was recovered from, I think, a hard drive. Not by me, by someone else. So I cannot show the actual uh, footage, but uh, I can show you how uh, we'll be repairing it. And um, let's start just talk briefly about a uh, move file. A move file is basically a uh, the, the move uh, file, the mp4 file, the quicktime file. It says something about the structure of the file. Um, just like it, it's, it's like a miniature file system that gives us a structure so we can find stuff inside the file. We can reference the actual video data. We can reference the where the index is. Um, and the main three atoms of any um, a move file or MP4 file or QuickTime file are the FTIP, the move atom, and the MDAT atom. An atom sounds like, uh, sounds sciencey or I, I don't know, but it's basically a section. Yeah? So it's, uh, an atom says we have the FTIP atom. Uh, if we find that inside a file, we take the four bytes preceding this little four byte string, and then we know the size of the uh, F tip atom, and the same for the M that and the move atom. Uh, but the, basically, any uh, file that that uses this um, QuickTime container format will have those three atoms. Not all, of course, uh, like a brawl brawl file, B raw. I don't know how you pronounce it. They don't have, for example, an F tip atom. They came up with their own little name for that. It's called the white atom. Um, but they still follow this same uh, structure. Uh, so anyway. Um, basically, this is what we need to know about a move file to uh, try repair it. FTP is just a tiny, uh, it's a couple of bytes. It's not that important. You could see it as a header, although there is no official header. The M that atom is where the actual video data is and the audio. And the move atom is like an index. So you can search inside a, 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 a uh, you can pull the little slider uh, of your video player. Say you slide to 50%, it will use this move atom to find the data that is at uh, that point. Um, anything else we need to know? Yeah, okay, so and, and, and uh, the repair that we'll be doing uh, assumes, uh, for example, that the M that data is intact. Uh, so this is purely a, a structural repair, but a lot of corrupt files are uh, corrupt or unplayable or cannot be opened because there is something wrong not with the data, but the structure of the file. So often, uh, 
knowing something about the structure and being able to fix it can help us um, repair a file, make it playable or open, openable. Uh, okay, so uh, hex editor, you read it a lot. I read it a lot in forums and whatever, and people uh, say I have a corrupt WAV file, I have a corrupt JPEG file, I have a corrupt movie. There's always somebody who yells, you can use a hex editor. Yeah, well, let's do this. Let's open this corrupt file with HXD, a free hex editor. We have opened it. And so now what? I mean, what are we going to do with this hex editor? We do not only need the hex editor, we, we need a tiny amount of knowledge, about uh, a tiny amount of information about the file we're dealing with. And our tiny amount of information is right here. <clears throat> uh, with this tiny amount of information, we know that if we find a FTP atom, a move atom, and an MDET atom, and uh, they all reference to each other, so I have, I have the correct size FTP, let's say 20 bytes, then 20 bytes further, I must be able to find this MDET um, atom. Let's say this MDET atom, I find it is. 100 100,000 bytes then 100,000 bytes further into the file i should be able to find this move atom and if, if those conditions are met then we have a pretty good chance that we actually will end up with a playable uh, file so let's just start we, we see a bunch of zeros. This is always bad. We don't want zeros. But okay, it, then all of a sudden it starts becoming data, chaotic data. Chaotic data is good because uh, uh, media type files uh, like uh, JPEG photos or MP4 videos or MOOC videos uh, consist of largely compressed data. And compressed data looks like chaos because if we ha would have if it would look uh, uh, orderly, what do I mean by that? I mean, for example, uh, let's say uh, with DA, we have by DA here, uh, and then 42. If we find the whole block with bytes DA42, 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 that is less chaotic, but it also contains less information because we can take uh, 100 instances of DA42, and we can compress the shit out of that. And um, so, any pattern or any repeat that is inside this data, we can just squeeze that repeat out. So then, without repeats, we get this uh, chaotic data or high entropy data. Um, okay, the hex editor. I always, uh, any corrupt file I receive, I always, it always first goes through a hex editor. Um, but I'm not some kind of whisket, so I like my uh, offsets and the, the, the values I do calculations with as much as possible. I like them to be uh, decimals, so I don't. Uh, all I switch this to decimals. Now we get nice decimals here for our um, um, offsets. We have uh, we're going to be working with four byte values to uh, the, the the for uh, to determine the sizes of the ad, of the atoms, and I happen to know there are. Big endians and big endians, little endians says something about the order in which we read the bytes. Um, okay. Now the most important uh, uh, piece of data we can find uh, find about uh, uh, of uh, when it concerns a move file or an MP4 or 
quick time file is the m dead atom the m dead atom is the actual uh, payload it's the actual video data so i want to know if there are m dead atoms inside this corrupt file i'm switching this to case sensitive because it's lowercase inside the file and i'm going to search them i clicked search also i get a ni nice list of any instances of m dead uh, inside the file um so here is one 75 percent inside the file and here's one uh, right toward, towards the start of the file uh, so we have two m dead atoms that we can work with i'm going to home uh, control home then yeah. now i'm going to find see if i can find f tip atoms they're not that important we can just steal them from an intact file but if we find them, the FTP uh, atom is normally the first atom inside a file. So if we find an FTP atom, we may have found the start of a actual move file. I find one FTP atom. Uh, again, around 75% inside the file. So this one is found very close to the MDAT atom to one of the MDAT atoms. Uh, here's the FTP atom. Here. Yeah. Uh, we know that the four bytes preceding it are the size of this atom. It's 24. So 24 bytes into the file we should be able to find the next atom which happens to be the a move atom so this is uh, good and so basically we, we can try the same thing we can take the move atom and um uh, offset i want to offset so i can add the size of the atom uh, paste plus uh, move four bytes preceding the move uh, atom uh, thingy I get uh, this for size and when I add that to the offset so the position inside the file where right now i get this i copy this i go there and we find a free atom a free atom is basically nothing um it basically says there's going to be a bunch of zeros now you can skip it you can skip it entirely and uh, the reason they exist is because uh, as we're discovering now we're uh, dealing with atoms referencing uh, to the next atom in the form of uh, 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 an atom size so if for some reason uh, uh, how do I explain this? Well, basically, a free atom allows us to stuff this in between a couple of atoms and then basically um, uh, uh, allows us to maintain this chain of atoms referencing to the next atom. So uh, if, if we have a um, order of FT move and that, so say we're a video starts recording this is basically all noise but starts recording and it creates an f and a move atom this move atom is the 
index. It doesn't know in advance how large it has to be. So it can reserve, uh, say, uh, a bunch of space. Then uh, and then uh, put an M that atom next to it where it will write video data. But this move atom needs to be able to grow as more video data is added. And so then the video recording stops and there can be a gap in between the move atom and the embed atom. And so basically to maintain this uh, chain of atoms, we can just insert a free atom there. I don't know if I made it any clearer, but okay. But this, we can just treat this as any other atom and we see it has a size of this. And then I can just take this, add that again. Then we go there. And then we find an M that atom. And this is the M that atom we found during our M that atom search. And so we now know because we can follow the uh, chain from the FT move the free atom. So we can we, we could insert a free atom here and then the atom. These belong to each other. And if we then um, take these four, we have the size of the M that atom. I copy those. I can add this again. And then we know the end of this M that atom. Go to. Did I paste it? Yeah. And well, this seems to be a complete M that atom because we have random data and then it goes into zeros. So basically what we have here is an almost, is a complete, uh, we found a complete uh, file here. Uh, so a very easy, if we search backwards to our FT atom, if we would take this if we would create a new file and if we would create our new file as test.move we actually Grab a complete playable uh, <laughs> file from this uh, corrupt move file. And um, uh, 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 basically, every uh, corrupt file I, I get, whether it's a JPEG or a, a WAV file or a, a move file, I always do this. I always uh, open it in the hex editor and try. Um, see if I can find a complete file in there, smaller than the uh, corrupt file itself, itself. So, well, this is progress. Now, um, we had the other m that file, the, end, the other m that atom. I'm going back to the corrupt file. Oh, uh, what, am I, what am I doing? I'm going back to the corrupt file. I'm going to go back to my M that M that we found towards the start of the file. Uh, we can get its size. 
copy. Let's clear all this. And I add the offset of where we are right now. Uh, what am I doing? Offset plus size. Uh, and this gives me the end of this M that atom. So we're, we'll go there. And it seems pretty plausible because we, the, the end of the atom uh, gives us the random video data and then goes into zeros. So what I'll do is I want to isolate this uh, M that atom and I want to create a new file I want to put it in there I didn't copy And then I save this file as this is my M that Adam. Yeah, we call it we, we can call it whatever we want. I, I'm going to call it M that dot move. It saved it now, and then there was a bunch of zeros in the st at the start of the file. I, I would like to get rid of those because. We don't need them. Uh, so delete. And then we're uh, we have our embed file. We save it. Uh, I make this uh, backup file. I don't need it. So, what we did is basically our our file in our file we had uh, started with file started with a bunch of zeros then we found an M that atom and then seventy percent percent into the file we find we found an F T atom we found a move atom and we found an M that atom and this we have already dealt with this this resulted in this playable video and now i want to deal with this m that and i've i took it from the corrupt file and i put it in this separate file i don't know if i already said it but there do exist tools that um can take a M that file, and if we give it a, 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 a reference file, and a, and a reference file being a playable intact video shot with the same camera, it can try to make it playable again. It will try to generate a move atom for it, and it will glue an FT atom onto it. Um, and one of these tools is called untrunk and it's free and you can find it on github um well i, I will uh, yeah untrunk untrunk is the uh, is the file the exe there is linux versions windows version whatever and it basically uh take the um it wants to uh, i forgot the command line is untrue good file corrupt file 
these are the two parameters parameter you give it so a good file correct file so we give it the good file space and then the corrupt file which is our mnet thingy and enter and it made a little boo boo it says something went wrong, and, but it also gives us a suggestion uh, for a, a para parameter we could add to the command line. So we'll do that, uh, dash sm, for search for mdev. We'll try again. And we immediately see it produced a a playable video. So I'm, 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 I fear my video is a bit chaotic, but what I wanted to show you is how you can use a hex editor and some other free tools to um, try repair your own files. And uh, so I told you a little bit about the, the hex editor I uh, use. I, I, there's more hex editors I use. Uh, but this one I use the most. It's the quickest, it's the simplest, uh, simplest, uh, the least bloat, the least noise, and all that. And. Um, but a hex editor is not enough for uh, repairing files. So then we, since we would be repairing this corrupt move file, there is some minimal amount of information we need about this uh, container format. But basically with very little information and with just two free tools, we were able to uh, get data out of this corrupt uh, move file and uh, suppose you is th this move file was the product of a file recovery tool it might as well have been uh, the free tool uh, recuba so there, there, there's a lot of things you can do with free tools uh, paid tools uh, proprietary proprietary tools may make things easier and quicker and all that but then you actually then you're sort of paying someone who has done the uh, groundwork for you and um, it sometimes it annoys me when I I, I, uh, I read in forums and someone has some corrupt file wave move whatever and there's always some smart ass that says uh, use a hex editor and then they disappear again and um, but yeah using a hex editor it's like uh, giving uh, someone who knows nothing about cars some tools and tell them to go fix a car with it. It's it's nonsense. Okay, so but basically what I wanted to try to do is, okay, use a hex editor, what can we do with it? And uh, I recorded this video already, but I forgot to... Uh, uh, record the sound so this is my second attempt it's not worse not better than the first attempt it's equally bad but i still hope it helps someone and uh, it's almost weekend have a nice weekend